bus lines uh, were severed uh, and booby trapped and there was other booby traps uh, placed and stuff like that uh, anyway the theory here is this and is that there's this large group of people okay and what they do is that they seize people's houses in Pasadena and the way they seize them is that there's there's poisoned wells there they know they're poison and everything and instead of running the well deeply into the ground which you know you should and you know taking measures like filtering the water and stuff like that they're not they're running it up to a shallow surface and they're picking up all the TCEs and all the perchlorates and all the other goodies that are just like in there from JPL dumping everything into the uh, into the Arroyo now they pump this stuff into the neighborhoods knowing people are going to get sick uh, it was openly told to me that my water's poison, my water's poison, my water's poison by the head of the water department when I was arguing with her and uh, you know about you know having my water stuff put on and then uh, you know, the Sammy told me, you know, how to take, uh, how the best thing to do was to take a bath, but put in, you know, like a, a bottle of uh, uh, isopropanol alcohol. And, uh, oh, that would really work good, you know, good for the muscles and everything, right? <laughs> but it's poison, and it makes the thing driver, it drives it into you deeper. Now, they had, underneath the house, they had broken the pipe on purpose this for the sewer drainage, and they had created an actual uh, a vault for, for uh, uh, sewage to accumulate under the house and then slowly leach out through the electric power run that runs alongside the driveway and uh, into the yard, which has got a layer of really old sewage on it. Um, and, you know, under that there's compact paint, clay that was placed there and it's got little parts in it and stuff. And that was done to hold in all the uh, um, chemicals that are buried in the back. And there's barrels and barrels underneath the ground. The house in the back, 2192 Corson Street, Pasadena, California, is sinking into the ground. There is no pad on that house, yet that house was not red tagged. That house was not yellow tagged. They keep that house active. More people are going to be moving in there. Um, they did not rehook up the sewer line. I did. I had a temporary two inch hose to uh, run the sewer line into the thing. The sewer line was cut and allowed to, on the P trap in the middle of the yard, and allowed to escape gases into the yard. Now, the reason why that is is because it's a bio uh, mass. The bio mass needs to be kept alive and fed. And that, what that does is that knocks down all the, the chemicals. Now, I was told by a source that there's drug manufacturing going on in uh, Pasadena over there, illicit drugs. And they're dumping, there's a, a theory, and it's just a theory, but they're dumping the chem. They don't have any place to put them, so they dump the chems into the backyard. All right? And they dump them into the backyard, and then you got the sewage and all that stuff to kind of, you know, Call it down, right? To eat them, and it works over time. But no human being should be there. It's too powerful, and it's too. It's just incredibly strong. It's just like powerful. We've had to take extreme, extraordinary measures to stay alive. Now, imagine this: you get people supposedly that own it, right? The property, but what if they belong to a bigger group? And the bigger group is a city. And they have people in every single department of the city of Pasadena, California. Every single department, including the clerk's office and including the judges, the magistrate, okay? A ju they use a magistrate, not a judge. And uh, all the way up and down, including the police department and everything. So they have formulated a method of taking people's properties, okay? taking people's properties, making them sick, and taking them. For instance, um, Pasadena controls the entire health department. Everything. Nothing is counting. Nothing goes outside. They have jurisdiction on everything. You can't get to the records. Yet people get sick there, 
and especially the elderly or the you know the weak or whatever, they get sick. They go into a, a hospital, a nursing home, and their property gets seized after a month or two, because that's legal. They can legally seize their homes, unless their homes are in a trust or something. And then you have head of occupancy, head of you know uh, inspections. You got code compliance. They all come down and swoop down and say, "Oh, this place is no good, right?" We're, we're, we're condemning it, right? These properties are then sold for 10 grand, and I got like lots of evidence of that. And 10 grand a piece is the average. These properties are sold, and then what they do is they sold, sell them and transfer them to a shell group, okay? Sami Masri, uh, Muhammad Kamura, uh, Hussein Kamura, uh, Hussein, Hassan Kamura, and Hussein uh, Babaki. They sell them to these shell groups. And they, and they, what they do is they, they take the thing and they put it in a trust or they have it in their name. And, uh, but the real owners, the real owners are the actual city people. And it's all in a group. Everyone throws into it. And, um, and they, they, so basically what they're doing is you, you take a well and you know that the water's poisoned and you have a deep you know, it should be a deep well, but what they do is they rise the uh, the feet up to the top where all the poison is because uh, TCE, perchlorates, stuff like that, it's light. It just floats to the top. And what they do is they suck that water out, pump it into the, an area, and say, okay, this area is going to be affected by this well, and they just let it run into there. People get sick. They come in, and when people get sick, they stop taking care of their houses. And they come in. And they stop taking care of their legal affairs and stuff like that. And then the city comes in and they go tap, 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 tap. And then they just, it's like a machine. And they have it all down. And what they do is they just knock people into the dirt. And then they, things are sent through court. Uh, uh, absentee uh, judgments and stuff like that. Where, um, and uh, default judgments. And then the, the records are burned. The records are burned. All right, paperwork has changed. You can find the evidence of that through the interactive uh, permit center. And you can see how the paperwork was changed, things were done. You even have, you know, inspectors and stuff like that who own these houses who inspect their own houses. Okay, you got Tony Escamilla who has an inspection company, right, that operates in San Gabriel Valley, and he's an inspector full time, right? with Pasadena. That's a total conflict of interest. Um, you got uh, uh, you know, Ophelia Cavazos, the health department. She comes in and it will, she'll shut the place down. They pulled the meter twice at that property that I know of. Once for me and once for another guy that died. And uh, people came out of there in ambulances after two, three months of living there. A month and a half sometimes. I found that out. We were there for a long time, and we took extreme, extraordinary measures. We have uh, special um, mineral baths and, and other homeopathic things that we use and, and uh, stuff like that, and also radiation. Now, this goes up so high that I had a federal EPA officer go there. He found radiation in the yard, but he, he farbed the meter, like it, the meter went off. And there was two of them there, and there was another <coughs> specialist, and the meter went off, and he just he messed with the dials and in front of me, and that's stupid. He sent me a letter and told me that um, he used three different types of machines. Well, he didn't. He didn't use a flame analyzer. He brought one, but he didn't turn it on. That's because the methane gas and stuff, it would have shown up. And there's gas on the uh, uh, east side of the house that comes out of the uh, where the gas meter is. And there's a, 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 I call it a water spout. It's in the front. Water never stops there. The water's been shut off, but it still leaks and what have you. And, and you can see that. it's And it goes straight into the water table. Now, we got barrels and barrels of stuff underneath that ground. And they're coming out, and everybody who goes in the backyard gets high, dis high, dizzy, you know, sick, like immediately. And it's it's it. What happened was I did a remediation on this on the uh, sewage, 
and uh, I had to fold it into the backyard. The city didn't come, the owners didn't come. I was forced to clean up 1,500 gallons plus of sewage, 2,000, you know, whatever, you know, a lot. And I've got the professional equipment. I've been in the uh, remediation business and uh, cleaning business uh, for 20 years. Actually, more than that. And I was banned from touching any of my stuff for three months. So it would go and rot in the backyard and get ruined, which it did. We lost over $100,000, 150000 in cash. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in goods and supplies. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and this was all okay for the, by the city. All okay. And the reason why it's all okay is because they own the house. And you will see through the, the words and the paperwork and the stuff they wrote me that these guys are all working in concert, all working in harmony, all together. It's a collusive group of, of criminals that are murderous um, criminals. Anyway, that's all for now. The problems that are likely to have occurred, or almost certainly to have occurred, at uh, Desert Area Army Reserve Center, first of all, there's an underground storage tank, which has never been investigated, yet it's on the maps on the city site. Uh, other buildings on the site were a painting shop and an automobile maintenance facility and an automobile wash rack. In my experience on military facilities, Every underground storage tank has leaked or had material spilled around it. Every paint shop has had hazardous materials released, principally uh, trichloroethylene, which is a carcinogen, and uh, uh, paint uh, thinners such as toluene and ethylbenzene. Uh, the fuel would, in the fuel tank would have been leaded gasoline, so there's probably tetraethyl lead in the soil and groundwater. And these things have not been addressed. Why is this a problem to the city? The Army is obliged to clean these things up through all of eternity. The problem that the city would face is if the city took this uh, for a public use without cleaning up and someone became ill or got cancer, God forbid, they could sue, but they cannot sue the Department of Defense, but they can sue the city of Pasadena for negligence. The solution to this problem is quite simple. The hazardous materials group within the fire department needs merely to write a letter to either the Regional Water Quality Control Board or the Department of Toxic Substances Control 